name is Anne Marie. I grew up in Brewster, New York, but for the past few years, I've been living in New York City in an apartment. I'm Ella Tansy from Elkins, Iowa. My husband George and I own a little house on Grover Lane. All right, Anne Marie, Mrs. Tansy, get ready to get rich quick. Anne, for $10 each, you have 30 seconds to tell me the names, first name and last, of the neighbors in your apartment building. Go. Uh, uh, let's see, there's uh, Ruthie and Jerry Bauman. You've just won $20, keep going. And, uh, uh, there's, uh, uh, Mrs. Pomerantz. What's her first name? I don't know. Anyway, she moved. Fifteen seconds to go. Oh, there's, uh, uh, oh, that nice-looking couple down the hall. Namely? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, your time is up. And uh, I'm afraid you haven't been a very good neighbor. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Mrs. Tansy, for $10 each, you name your neighbors on Grover Lane. Go. There's Bill and Cora Wills, Jim and Jane Barton, Ed and Ethel Brown. Do children count? You bet. Jim, Jr., Karen, Laura, Steve, Timmy and Billy Barton. Oh, Steve's a whiz at math. H Hank and Ellie Peters across the street. He he's just getting over pneumonia. Frank, Hilda, and Helen Gibbs. Paul, Gloria, Anne, and Willie Smith. Congratulations, Mrs. Tansy. You have just won $210. I never got to mention the Freedmans. Yes, and uh, unneighborly, you won $20. No, but don't feel bad, Ann. Can you both come back on Friday? Oh, you oh, bet I can. can. Good, because that's our jackpot bonus day when Get Rich Quick pays $50 for each and every piece of information. Information about what? Uh -huh, that would be telling, but I'd advise you to start loving your neighbors. That's it for today, folks. Let's hear it for this good neighbor. And uh, that girl. Donald, I still have a chance to win. I've got three days, well, two and a half, really, to get to know everything I can about my neighbors. How do you do that? Well, by making friends with them. Uh, two, please. And how do you do that in this town? Well, that shouldn't be too hard. I figured it out. I could kind of stop and chat in elevators, you know, and ring doorbells if I have to. Uh, have you locked up? Don't you know there's a law against talking nice to your neighbors in New York? Well, Donald, that is all wrong. People should really try and reach out to one another. <laughs> Here, well, try walking through Central Park at night and you'll see how many people reach out for you. Good evening. Good evening. Say, uh, I'm Anne Marie in 4D. Huh? <laughs> well, good evening. Grace, remind me to get a new lock for our door. Hi, I'm Anne Marie from down the hall in 4D. Yes? Well, uh, I thought it'd be nice if we got acquainted. What's your name? Biff. Johnson. Who is it, honey? It's a neighbor. What does he want? It's a she. Oh. Well, what does she want? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm Anne Marie from down the hall in 4D. I didn't even know your husband was married, which is just my point. Why don't you just knock it off? <laughs> Good 
morning. Huh? I'm Anne Marie in 4D. We're neighbors. So? Well, I, I just thought we've never met before. No, we haven't. And I, I thought it might be nice, you know, if we got acquainted. Oh, hey, that's not a bad idea. How would you like to go dancing? Oh, no. Bad feet. <laughs> My, that certainly is a large can of olive oil. Yeah, it is. Where did you ever buy such a large can? Oh, I don't buy it. I sell it. I'm in the business. Why is that ever fascinating in the business? <laughs> I just love olive oil. It's terrific. You do? Yes. Well, I mean, I think it's really one of the most useful things on the market today. I mean, you can use it for salads and seasoning and cooking and frying. I just love it. Uh, why don't you and I go upstairs and uh, we can toss a salad? <laughs> yeah, that, that could be nice. I'll uh, ask my fiancé. Maybe he'd like to join us. <laughs> well, bye. I'll see you. Hi there. What? I said hi. I'm Anne Marie from 4D. What apartment are you in? I'm sorry, but I make it a rule never to talk to my neighbors. Familiarity breeds contempt. The first thing that happens is, you'll know who my callers are, and I'll know who your callers are. Then we'll be embarrassed when we see each other, and we'll avoid bumping into each other, and it'll throw our schedule completely off and make it just simply a, a hateful situation. <laughs> Good day. Now, what am I going to do about this show tomorrow? I've only got one neighbor I can talk about, Jerry. Well, I'm a pretty fascinating subject. Honey, I told you, New Yorkers just don't open up to their neighbors. I think it's in the lease. They're not allowed. Look, honey, is it possible you came on too strong? Oh, sure. I said good morning to them. They don't have to listen to that kind of talk. The trouble is, New Yorkers never come together except in some kind of disaster. Isn't just living in New York enough of a disaster? You know what I mean, Jerry. A blizzard, a sanitation strike, a water shortage. How about that power failure? Have you any idea how friendly people get in the dark? I still get a phone call every once in a while from a guy I shared an elevator with. So listen, just relax and accept that's the way it is, Ann. Ann, where are you? Where'd she go? What's going on? What's with the buzzers here? What in the world is that? What's all the noise? I don't know. I was coming up the stairs and I just heard all these buzzers. What's going on? What do we do? I know. Why don't we call the janitor? Come on in my apartment while I try and get him. No, we, we don't wish in truth. Oh, don't be silly. We're all in this together. Come on in. Well, let's go. Come on. I'll try and get him on the phone. Don't you go away. At the tone, the time will be... 531 uh, and well, 30. I guess he's not in. Well, I'll check the buzzer panel downstairs. Donald! Uh, well, uh, why don't we all introduce ourselves? I'm Anne Marie, and that was my boyfriend, Donald Hollinger. I'm uh, Jerry Bowman. I know that. Well, um, I'm Horace Hinson, and this is my wife, Grace. I'm Bob McIntosh from Indianapolis. I'm a designer. Ed Peroni, I'm an olive oil. Uh, <laughs> we're Biff and Jill Johnson. Isn't that nice? Imagine, took a thing like this for us to all get acquainted. <laughs> well, that's New York for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, listen, uh, why don't we all sit down and I'll make some coffee just to make yourselves comfortable. Hey, it stopped. Well, I guess your boyfriend must have fixed it. Oh, we'd better go now. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Good night now. Uh, oh, well, wait a minute. Wait. Uh, I, I have an announcement to make. Uh, I'm, um, I'm going to give a little party this evening, and I'd like you all to come. You're oh. going to give a party? Sorry. Sorry. Well, like to, to... We have to do oh. something. Oh, well, uh, uh, it's my birthday. You wouldn't turn me down on my birthday. Your birthday? Oh, oh, well, what a happy birthday. birthday. What a happy oh, birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'll see you all later then, around 7. Okay. Well, great, nice. great. Don't nice. leave any presents, though. No, we'll bye see bye. you later. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Well, are you the one who fixed the buzzers, young man? Uh, yes, it wasn't very hard to do. Well, we're very grateful. See you later, Miss Marie. Yes. 
What was it with the buzzers, Don? Oh, just one of your average minor disasters. You'll see them later when. At her birthday party tonight. <laughs> oh, you're having two birthdays this year? Wait, you mean today isn't my birthday? Ha <laughs> ha. Good, honey, good, really good. The birthday and the buzzers. Oh, what did you expect me to do? Come up with a blizzard? I know, it's great. I really was delicious. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good night, Jill. Bye, Jill. Goodbye. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ferroni. So much fun. Thank you, Mr. McIntosh. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming, Mrs. Hanson. Goodbye, Mr. Hanson. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Great party, Ann. Yeah, the best birthday party ever threw yourself eight months before your birthday. I had a terrific time. Yeah, profitable, too. They couldn't stop talking about themselves. You're gonna need a Brinks truck to haul away all the loot you're gonna win. It was a lovely evening, and not because of the money. No. All right, all right. I do admit that it all started out because of the money. But once I got to meet all of those people and, and see what they were like, I was really ashamed of myself. Oh, honey. No, Donald, I mean it. I mean, I was ashamed because I never took the time before to meet them and, and share in their lives and let them share in my life. At 10 bucks a share? Jeremy, when are you going to learn to trust people? When my best friend returns the $5 she borrowed from me to buy a $2 birthday cake. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll get my purse. Pigeon says to the juggler, oh, man. What's the matter, honey? I left my purse on my dressing table, and now it's not there. Well, maybe that's not where you left it. That is where I left it. I had it out just before the party started when I paid the grocery boy. So it's got to be someplace else. It's not someplace else. I know. I left it there. Is uh, anybody thinking what... No, uh... no, they're not. But isn't it possible? All right, all right, all right. I'll 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 say it. While you were at the party sharing with your neighbors, one of your neighbors decided to share your purse. Donald, what are we going to do? There's only one thing to do. We've got to call the police. Oh, no, Donald. And somebody stole that money. I don't care. I'm not going to squeal on my neighbors. So you're just going to forget about the money and the purse and the fact that a crime's been committed? Well, I'm going to just have to try. I can't commit to loving my neighbors one day and then send them to prison the next. All right, all right, but you just can't forget about it. Well, let me suggest that you just kind of casually observe them for flaws, flaws in their behavior. What do you mean, flaws? Well, I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, 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 something the Hansons might say, Ferroni might do. Macintosh, I don't think you have to worry about. But watch them. Donald, maybe somebody at the party did take my purse, but I'm certainly not going to jeopardize the wonderful relationships that I've started with all the neighbors just because of one rotten apple. One rotten apple must be Macintosh. <laughs> good morning, Miss Marie. Oh, good morning. Grace and I certainly had a wonderful time last night. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, you show people certainly know how to throw a party. Thank you. I uh, hope you're going to let Uncle Sam pay for it. What do you mean? Why, you're in showbiz, Miss Marie. For you, entertainment is a tax-deductible expense. I know, but last night's party wasn't a business expense. Oh, who's going to know? Heck, I do the same thing all the time in my line. You're an undertaker, aren't you? That's right. Well, who do you entertain? Well, I said I entertain my clients. I never say uh, I get laughs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely, honey. It's very unscrupulous of Mr. Hanson. Unscrupulous? It's like stealing from the government. Th that's exactly what it is. You know, Donald, he's no less of a criminal than whoever it was who stole my... Donald, you don't think he's... He's... Oh, Donald, I'll call you back. Somebody's at the door. Okay, bye. Oh, hi. Good morning. 
This is a little token of appreciation for a most enjoyable social evening. Oh. Compliments of the Bradleys. Who? The Bradleys. They're our neighbors in 4A. They went away and they forgot to tell the milkman to stop delivery. So every morning, free milk. You take their milk? Well, it's better than letting it sit there and spoil. No, well, no, of course not. C couldn't you just leave a note for the milkman and tell him to stop delivering? I figure he can use the business. Cheers. Cheers. All right, we've narrowed it down to two suspects. Mr. Hansen steals from the government, and Mr. Ferroni steals from the cow. That's so depressing. I'm living in a nest of thieves. Hello. Oh, hi, Mr. Hale. Hi, just checking to make sure you'll be at the show on Friday. Oh, certainly, I'll be there. Grovey, you've been uh, boning up on your neighbors. I'll say. Good. Say, did I tell you about our special jackpot bonus question? No, I don't think so. Well, we pay an extra $100 for the neighbor with the most unusual occupation. What if he's a burglar? Uh, I was just kidding about that. <laughs> well, I'll see you on Friday. Yes, goodbye, Mr. Hale. Hi, Jerry. Case is closed. The kid did it. Crime does not pay when Bauman's in the way. The criminal is as well as behind bars. He's turning himself in. Funny, clever and funny, and somewhat cute, but wrong. Who, who did it? Who did it? Not so fast, Watson. Let us first reconstruct the crime. Her purse was stolen. <laughs> Having reconstructed the crime, let us reconsider the suspects. All the neighbors are suspects. <laughs> Having reconsidered the neighbors, we shall break them down Jerry, one by one. Will you come on now? Please tell me who did it. Now, at first, I thought it might have been Don. Oh, good. <laughs> because he was the least suspect. And the one who's the least suspect is the one you most suspect. And the one you most suspect is never the one who does it. But when I realized that because Don was the least suspect, he was the one I most suspected, I knew he couldn't have done it because he was the most suspect. And the one you most suspect is never the guilty one. I think I'm going to throw you out the window. However, I said to myself, wait a second. Anne might have done it herself for the insurance. Jerry! But then I remembered that purse, and I knew no one would insure that purse. So my attention was immediately sent in the direction of the other neighbors, and it's Biff and Bill. Jiff and Jill? Jack and Jill? It's Biff and Jill. What about them? What about them? Oh, 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 wouldn't you like to know? Yes, I would like to know. Tell me. Tell me what you know. Oh, I didn't think you'd want to know. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> All right. I happen to have bumped into them today at the Eastern Division Air Conditioning Convention at the Coliseum. What were they doing there? Eating. <laughs> Just going around eating free cookies, free hors d'oeuvres, free everything. He has nothing to do with air conditioning. And when I asked him about it, he said he and Jill follow the conventions all around town and eat for nothing that way all year long. And that, my friends, whether it sounds like it or not, is petty larceny. You mean you think that's the proof that they took my purse? Well, stealing is stealing. Yes, I happen to agree with you, but if we go by that definition, then everybody in this building is a thief. Well, then, crime really doesn't pay. I mean, how much will each of them get when they've got to divide up your $50? Oh, good morning, Miss Marie. Good morning, Mr. McIntosh. Oh, please, call me Bob. <sighs> Say, that was a great party. Thank you. I love meeting all the neighbors. Mm. They seem like such nice people. Terrific. They reminded me of the kind of folks I grew up with. What were they like? You know, just ordinary, plain people. We joined the Boy Scouts, went to the 4-H club convention, helped our daddies work the fields. Oh, that's terrific. You're the kind of people that are the backbone of America. Oh, Miss Marie, that's lovely. You really are a lovely person. Oh, thank and you. I'm going to share my secret with you. You give and you shall receive. Oh, please, I don't really want anything. Oh, all the more reason why you shall have it. And we won't be needing this. Now, now for my little secret and my gift to you. Now watch. A coat hanger now. Excuse me. Now 
Now watch. Voila! And what do you have? A free wash, courtesy of the building. And one rotten apple. I beg your pardon? Nothing, nothing, Mr. Macintosh. Well, now you know. Everybody in this building is a crook. Why didn't you do like in the old mystery movies? Give a dinner party and invite all the suspects. Well, who knows what they'd steal this time? I'll get it. Maybe it's the guilty person returning to the scene of the crime. Officer. Your name, Anne-Marie? Uh, yes, it is, sir. Is something the matter? Is this your purse? Yes, it is. Where did you find it? It was part of the loot we picked up with the cat. Who? A cat burglar who does a lot of trade in this part of town. Oh, Donald, see, it wasn't one of my neighbors who took it. Is that what you thought? Certainly not. <laughs> How much money did you have in your purse? Fifty dollars. Here, sign this. There you are. Here's your fifty. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Next time, don't uh, leave your purse near an open window. He came up the fire escape while we were having the party. Yes, that's the way he always operates. Well, good night, Miss Marie. Thanks so much, officer. Just doing my job. Really, thank you. I'm so grateful. I mean, it's not just the money, but now I can trust people again. <laughs> oh, Donald, I feel so much better. Me too. At least we know your neighbors aren't crooks, uh, but they may be burglars. I mean, we really should be ashamed of ourselves. Why? Well, because. I mean, we never even bothered to, to think that it might be a real crook. The first thing we did was suspect our neighbors, and that's wrong. And that's what's wrong with society today, too, Donald. Well, honey, rather than feel bad, why don't you look at the bright side? What bright side? You had a party, you got your money back, you learned there wasn't a crook in the building, and you found out enough about your neighbors in this apartment to help you win tonight. Oh, my gosh, we better get going. We're going to be late. And this is Anne Marie from Brewster, New York, now residing in an apartment house in the Big Bird. Ready, Anne? Raring to go. Good. Then for $50 each, Tell me every fact you know about your neighbors back in Brewster. But how did you remember Myra Greenstone was the name of the librarian? I don't know. It just suddenly came back to me. I remembered how we used to call her Redstone Greenstone because the library was made out of redstones and her name was Greenstone. That's fantastic. Two, please. And the Myra part? Oh, that was easy. Myra was my aunt's name. Oh, and your aunt is a librarian, too? Oh, no, she's a housewife. Oh, well, what was it about your aunt that reminded you of the librarian? Nothing. Well, well, you said you remembered the librarian's first name was Myra by remembering your aunt's first name was Myra. No, I didn't. I said I got the name Myra from my aunt. That's my aunt's name. The slightest idea what the librarian's first name was. You mean you made it up on the spot? Yeah. Well, that's cheating. No, it isn't. He didn't ask for first and last names, and I got the last name right, didn't I? Goldstone. Greenstone. Oh, my gosh. It was Goldstone, Donald. I remember now. Agnes Goldstone. Oh, Donald, I really did cheat. I don't deserve to get that money. Honey, you didn't cheat. You really thought it was Greenstone. If they don't check, that's their fault. Agnes Goldstone, not Greenstone. Greenstone was the... <gasps> now what? Greenstone was the druggist in Brewster, not Greenstein. I said Greenstein. Greenstein was the tailor. Well, what did you say? Goldstein. Oh, Donald, I'm through. Uh, honey, you're, you're not through. It was the show's fault. What do you mean, the show I'm through in Brewster with Greenstone, Goldstone, Greenstein, and Goldstein? 